And this is not even a humanoid form, it's a swirling mass of tentacles uh, with cracks of like strange energy, uh, tentacles, mouths, uh, maddening eyes. It's like a pure, like bigger and better version of Shogot. And we it feels call him bad. Fred. And uh, just before that, after the shift has been felt, and just before that creature appeared and landed with a thundering crack and boom. Uh, and if you like endured and survived the suffering, that was the entire procedure to get rid or at least. Uh, make sure your other guy won't take over for several ages. Yep. Uh, and of course, you like even though you are eternal, uh, we can see uh, several new scars, uh, some around his head. I mean, uh, of course, people probably won't say because of his helmet, but around his head, heart, and whatnot. Uh, there, you see that runes disengage. The entire like security system disengages. As Marius is in, popping in, and, and he just like without even like you know saying hi or being like, he he's not even pretending to be friendly to you. He's like, get up, your time has come, and you'd better have that uh, spear of destruction with you. We're gonna need it now. I get up and stretch and say, "Where's my stuff? Where's my shit, bitch?" <laughs> Uh, and then Asmarius is like, uh, Legion, like waves his hand and there's like a change, slight reality warp and your uh, equipment uh, appears in Hammer Space right next to you and Asmarius, including right, and Spear of Destruction. The Spear yeah. of Destruction is stored inside of the gauntlets, yay! Ah, and it's on the console, yes. And so I put all the stuff on and put the bow in it. In the gauntlets as well, because I can hold up the ten weapons and that just makes it seven. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yep. Okay. Prepare the spear and then he like puts a hand on your shoulder and then you just like operate. And you are not on the ground level, but like, I don't know, like 50 to like 100 feet above, above ground. Probably like somewhere above the city. And I go into my stance of the crane knight so I can fly. Yeah. And uh, if you didn't, then he would probably like cast a fly on or something. And then in the distance, uh, you see what I described it in just a moment. And you feel like while looking at it, and that's all of you feel. And I guess you will pass your, like, you don't need to roll a will saves because you are so strong that you will pass it, but. Uh, you see that many people, many of your allies, just like they sh shy their eyes away. They like cannot look at this uh, thing. Some of them have like there are some cases when like, there's like a blood dripping from their noses, from their. Eyes. Uh, I look like Marius and ask him if I can beautiful. get a two strike. They can't. They can't look at it. It's just too beautiful. <laughs> no, it is not. I mean, yeah, I'm I'm using not deadly version of something that Cthulhu has. That unless you pass a DC 40 or unless you you are immune to death and fear effects, I think. Uh, when you look at Cthulhu and you fail or you don't have immunity, you just die. Yep. Yeah. So it's so far away, so it doesn't have that severe consequences, but it's just so monstrous and so alien. Like you might be so immune to fear, confusing. but it just. By looking at it, your mind feels wrong. I forget, where did I get the spear from? Uh, that was a gift from very secret special stash that was given by former Grand Master of Inquisition, okay. Osmond Ateron. And he, like, he was very... they didn't use that anyways. And as much as like, 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 nods towards that abomination, that's your target. Use the spear before it comes closer. Can I get a true strike? Nope. Uh, Suck a dick. Do it yourself. <laughs> I'm asking you, Marius. Ah, you mean the uh, the spell? Yep. Uh, I've laughed if that was the uh, the answer you got. 
Nope, do it yourself. Suck a dick. <laughs> <laughs> Use the spirit as more. Yes, I mean, what? <laughs> Use the force, Luke. And then there's like, you see him uh, not saying anything, but you feel like a spell being casted. Alright, swift action. I pull out the spear, uh, then I throw it at the thing. And then you die. Okay, so um, the spear flies through, through not through, fr through, uh, like over hundred kilometers away from Dragon Height, without even like it almost like a in clear line, leaving uh, like a comet, leaving um, a trail of pure energy behind. And the entire distance is covered in like less than five seconds. So people just see like a whiff of... And then in slow motion we see as the spear is just like a inches before the abomination. We see as the collective eyes of this thing just all at once widen, dilitate, and then there is like a flash of blinding light. And like a second sun is born on the ground of deep gulf, there is a resounding, I cannot even like describe how loud it is, uh, explosion that, for example, shatters every porcelain or every like uh, weak uh, object that wasn't like properly secured, all glasses, glass windows in town uh, just shatter uh, some the shock wave some people are like knocked behind some manage to stay afoot or just like pull their weapons into ground and uh, like hold for dear life and yeah there's like a all potential effects of almost like a nuclear detonation but it did the thing after the smoke clears you see, uh, like the deep crater of deep gold that's partially frozen, partially like uh, uh, partially uh, melted, and there's absolutely nothing left from that. Uh, above. Of course, some of the marching armies that were near it. Some of them died because of that creature, some of them died from... Ex and it's gone. Yeah, this one mm. is gone. Mm. But of course, there is still, still more to come. Yeah, uh, he, had to, <laughs> he had to use that resource. It's all about and then, using a... And then I charge it into battle. You do your thing, now do what you do best. And then points, there are your enemies. Somewhere in somewhere of the far distance, you hear. Oh, you mean dying? Ha! <laughs> I pull out my bow and shoot you with it. <laughs> <laughs> I gave it, you that. Oh my god, that's my side, you dick! <laughs> it, it bounces off your scales harmlessly. <laughs> There's a question: Would a dragon that I'm fighting be be distracted by the nuclear explosion? Mm. Probably everything is distracted by the nuclear explosion. Just about, yeah, yeah, just about to say. Yeah, Holy then, shit! Exclamation point! Bigger balls, what's what happening? Would, oh no! <laughs> would set, uh, 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 and then, get, then after Genshira says that, he just sees me flying like straight towards the uh, storm of dragons. Whee! Mm. It was book of George R. R. Martin. Then, get, then, get, then, then again, she was like, well, we're fucked. Nope. <laughs> Hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> we're all going to die. <laughs> but no, is this a good opportunity to use the uh, horn sword? Uh, I hope you've wrote it down. What does it do? Because I already forgotten. Uh, I wrote it down, don't worry. Blood for the Blood God, Skulls for the Skulthorn, that corn? Uh, yeah, it is, a, it is a good point, to be honest. Because there is like, as the battle progresses, 
you can feel more and more like riffs in reality like the reality is being ripped apart as something forces its way through and two more absolute like colossal titanic sized creatures like bigger than the titans themselves who exclude right. the like it's without even rolls it just like intuition tells you that uh, those are physical forms either of your true enemies or their like most powerful servants or their avatars because they like exclaim the aura of absolute power and god all right well. and of course at this point as yeah genkiro do your thing and of course uh, serpent will be coming but we'll get to that in a moment genkiro you all right you want to unleash your gift yeah uh, so uh, from the walls genkiro who has been uh, busy uh, shooting uh, I don't know. Uh, do the uh, attacking soldier count as undead? Uh, depends which side, because they're like armies from like ghostly visages, so they're like, yeah, like specters, yeah. so yeah, they, they, they can be counted as undead. Yeah. yeah. Some of yes. them. Some, they're like as elementals, monsters, magical beasts. There's like yes. all kinds of enemies out there. Yeah, so uh, he's been busy uh, using his star bow to uh, kind of uh, send arrow after arrow after arrow into uh, a swarm, into the swarm of enemies. And uh, as he notices the ripple, he uh, draws the sword that he got, uh, morphs it into... Uh, a uh, gigantic uh, flugelhorn and uh, just this n majestic noise uh, 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 reverbs throughout the entire battlefield. Oh. Um, <laughs> not sure if entire because like the battlefields like it's many kilometers. <laughs> Like not it's not the city, but you know at least the front line is like at least like seventy, eighty kilometers. But in the city itself, it can be it can, it can. Yeah. And that's a lot. So yeah, you give a new bolster of strength, morale, and hope to and uh, to your allies that uh, just shaken off this uh, feeling of fear. Uh, after the abomination has been destroyed and they for so now that... just ignore the looming visages of two like absolute titans uh, in on the horizon that starts slowly coming uh, closer they are just focusing on their job yeah then Genkira is going to keep uh, blowing the horn uh, to uh, bolster morale and uh, just making sure everybody is uh, keeps fighting and doesn't retreat Fight wait to the death. wait wait that, that that sounds familiar not one step backward <laughs> <laughs> i mean you mean by that or you mean music wise but, but uh, by music that. wise So, as the gods or their servants of Avatar of theirs appeared, uh, suddenly to the left, those who would be able to see, uh, camera pans out, and at first we see that just uh, like large, uh, large pieces of forest, like large swathes of forest, just suddenly like starts falling down. Like something's been cutting down the trees in like hundreds in a second. Uh, then you see some, what at first glance looks like a mountain, but then you realize it moves. Oh boy. And then you realize that as uh, it comes through the great western forest with uh, serpent-like rock, you see the, of course, as with everything else in the Battle of Ragnarok, 
as of everything else, massive and colossal that no words can give justice to it. You see the Great Serpent now in full glory, not hiding in large river or something like that. And uh, you see as like this almost like a moving mountain range. Just goes straight forward for the like left titanic um, gut and to give like when they like clash it's like uh, there is a visible shockwave around them as a uh, serpent plows straight through him and the force of the strike like creates a mediocre earthquake shockwave and then the avatar one of them just starts flying backwards with uh the serpent partially like pushing him up like forward and partially starting to squeeze around part of his uh, sufficient to set uh one of the mountains in titan forge will be like it will be when they land devastating large swathes of area but then the second one is still here and uh, Alti, like suddenly you hear a voice near us you guess as Marius pops out uh, I'd suggest now is the time for your fancy bullets But fancy bullets are meant for fancy occasions. I, I go fight something big. And don't hold back. Audi, <laughs> Julius. <laughs> I go fight Jai. No. <laughs> Damn it. I, I, I fly inside of his mouth and start hitting him from the inside. <laughs> like down his throat and everything. I mean, he's large enough that I can probably fly without getting in stomach acid. I could fart. And you would be all everywhere. <laughs> It'd be great. Well then. Okay. Did I miss something? Explosions. <laughs> what do you mostly. mean? We're what waiting for uh, Aoti's special bullets. Yeah. yeah. Do you Where need them you? for something? The great serpent I, I, appeared, swayed from his feet, the one of the god avatars, or the gods themselves, or the mm -hmm. serpents. The second one. Like, even though he's like 100 kilometers away or something, his like visage is clearly visible because he's that fucking big. And uh, he, ca he he's getting closer to Dragon High and he's like picking up the pen. And like, mm -hmm. just as Marius pops, popped out near you and just said, now is the time for your fancy bullets. And probably need more all. than one. Mm -hmm. Not all of them, but more than one. You need 16,000. You have something that will be able to deal with And then mm -hmm. he points at the income. Yeah. <coughs> Don't. Okay. Hold am back. I there? Am I, not in the, am I not in the city dealing with the other dragon? Mm. Uh, I guess at this point either you dealt with him or... I mean, right. it's up to you. Because... I mean, I can always go deal with it. If you... If you <laughs> You don't have like resources to actually like stop it permanently. Yes, do. You already use the spear. I have the sword. Ah, the sword of the gas layer. Yep. So no, how this. how do you wanna go with it? I just fly at his face and drag the sword across his neck because I'm sure he's big and slow. Yeah, but okay, you will have to like get to him. Yep. I suppose I would kill the dragon while they're doing that. Mm. Uh, okay, so that were your decisions, and that was your decision that you, s you are still dealing with the dragon. I wouldn't. More annoying than I expected him to, to decide be. Decided on that. Yeah, he's like, yeah, that's what happens when dragon lives for our eternal, and even without the template, our the great wind dragons have like at minimum one thousand two hundred years. So mm. that's a lot of lifetime combat experience and whatnot. So, yeah, uh, you do that. There is 
one small bit of the problem because like Alti with her like special gun and bullet would be able to take him out from where she is. You have to like get to him. He doesn't attack you. But as you were flying to him, he was getting closer. And then apparently he got in range. Because suddenly his uh, eyes, you do not see exactly his eyes because like the visitor should not see like the exact specifics. But suddenly you, at the place where you think his eyes should be, there is like a dual uh, flash of light, Evangelion. <laughs> and uh, suddenly uh, those at Dragon Height or near it, you see that to the right, like 10 kilometers away, uh, there is a non-nuclear mini-nuke explosion. As one of the allied uh, companies or just gathered uh, forces, um, like several thousand troops are just obliterated in a matter of moments. I mean, you can explosion like, I don't know, like A-rays from Angel Notes or something like that. And then you see as he's preparing for another one and uh, you appear in his face and if. What do you do and how well do you do? I fly down and use the sword to like cut a circle in his neck to like cut off his head. Or I could just try to like slice my way into his head. That's always possible. Okay, uh, obviously I don't have stats for him, but we're gonna be doing some uh, roll of cool things. Okay. So depending how well you like roll for not attack rolls, but as you're like flying towards him, obviously you are much smaller than him, but then he like, you guess they probably feel the inherent danger that comes from your blade, that this is the blade that made, might as well end them or end their avatars. So obviously like his massive hands were slightly quicker than you would think for a creature of his size. Like, they're like, you know, a man trying to swat a fly away. So as you're like getting closer to his neck or something, then give me a reflex save to avoid Should I do a fly check? And let's see how well do you do that. Uh, you could. Yeah, uh, I'm cool with fly check too. Because it's slightly higher than my reflex save. Okay, uh, it's uh, well enough. Yeah, that, that's enough to fly easily through a hurricane, so... And actually, I think I get, like... Don't I get a bonus for having perfect flying? Maybe. I forget. Uh, and then, of course, as you, like, start pu putting the blade into his skin, uh, I just want to see how quickly you manage to get through it. I mean, either if you really like want to make a really superior, not superior, but really nice looking feat of strength, then you can give me a strength check. Or... Or fortitude check. Or... Um, attack check. But depending on which one you do, the effect will be slight. I'll do an attack check. May I ask if there is an attack bonus from the sword itself? Uh, let it be this time through strike plus 20. Alright. Because th this is the target that it's team. Originally I didn't plan for that, but whatever. You can have it. I just mean because, um, like, just like how my normal katanas are plus 3, so. But, yep, that'll work. Wow, I rolled a 6. Yeah, you have plus 38, but you rolled a 6. And yeah, it... Wait, did, did he hear uh, Genkiro's uh, horn? Probably. 
Yeah, but I really don't remember what does it do. Does it, did I give you that it allows a reroll, or what do you mean? Um, I don't know, but it should uh, probably give the uh, same uh, buffs as a normal bard spell, right? I mean, I very specifically have written down what does this thing do, but not written down for yeah. myself, but I said what does it do. So did yeah, I say it anything gave that? True seeing, foresight, true strike, haste, protection from evil. Yeah. It... Ah, right. Okay, so let's say that the blade itself didn't give you true strike, the spell from the home right. gave you. <clears throat> and yeah, it takes you. Less than 30 seconds, but still once or twice you have to like avoid as, uh, you know, as the no, as the human would try to squash mosquito, he tries to squash you before mm -hmm. you are able to. But he's not fast enough, not quick enough, and you are able to dodge them and then just plow inside and use your blade to proper measure and come out from the other side with like his neck like slightly falling off and the large piece of it has been cut off you are like covered in blood and whatnot the feat of st if you decided to make a strength roll then the effect if you succeeded then it would be much more cool but well, that's the way you went with my, my strength bonus is plus three yeah my my damage comes from my dexterity, which is plus ten. I know. Yeah, so I went with my attack because that's a much higher bonus. Oh well, anyways. Uh, yep. And as the, of course, battle rages on, more and more bodies are being thrown at. Uh, probably at some point there is like a sudden burst in 10 mile radius of green energy that means like it gives you like a like a life energy nature energy and this is the sign that John Stilson used his to uh, resurrect the fallen allies uh, within 10 miles uh, to give it a little more push for Allied All forces. fallen allies within 10 miles? Yes. Within 10 miles, which is... Well, I mean, he's in dragon height. Oh. Uh, yeah, I guess that isn't that far, so... Yeah, so mostly within the city, but it has it covered. Anyways, at some point... Uh... Just th that means that all, if it's all fallen allies, wouldn't all the eternal wanderers that were slaughtered in the um, ambush come back too? The ones that weren't eternal? No. Okay. Fallen allies, as in, in the... There's a time limit for... Okay. Because it's... Uh, yeah. It, well, we it, I understand it, something. It, it, Continu continuing. Yeah. Uh, at some point... Because I imagine... I don't know how you, like, uh, imagine it... Uh, Jai, but I imagine personally that when that's my head kind of like the summoner like he feels and he has this connection with his Eidolon and there's like a link between them and he, and he can like maybe not see it but feel uh, how's the link what's uh, going on and suddenly like you don't know the source but there's like a tug